Welcome guys to the section number two, component specification. Let me explain a little bit what we are going to cover on this section. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you guys is that we have three subsections. Subsection number A will be component types. We're going to see how does Aspen defines a component, what are the types of components, why are they divided that way, and how can we uh, report them or use them. Okay. Then comes letter B, the second subsection, which is component groups. It's nothing more than, let's say, stating a list with a certain component specification in order to favor the convergence of a method or whatever conversion theory analysis you are using. These will be very useful. And also in order to set up a list of component of interest. Okay. Then comes uh, the third subsection, which is letter C is the component databases. We're going to cover the actual databases which Aspen uses, some previous databases that you can check out. Maybe you have an interest, you want to see the difference if you have a model which you used maybe in 2010. You want to see what has, what, the, what are the new parameters, compare them, are they still useful, why do they change? You can do that as well. Also, if you have a very, uh, let's say, a component of interest, let's say ethylene, or ethylene glycol, you can search out for component databases and add them. Not only that, we're going to modify databases. We're going to add, show the different type of order for the databases. Maybe you want this database to be searched first, so we're going to do that as well. The section has plenty of workshops. Let me show you how many we have. Right here, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, six workshops. So I think it's enough in order to understand the component specification. Okay, so whatever doubt you have, guys, feel free to contact me or add it in the discussion board. See you in the next lecture.